Hey, Internet and Melly. I'm Casey. This is 25 and 52. And today, we're going to have an educational experience. I'm taking a class about something called process theology, um, which is based on the work of actually a mathematician named Alfred North Whitehead. Um, the course is, and I think the theory also mostly is. And and really, it's really interesting, and I'm really enjoying it, even if it's super complicated. Um, and every time I've told someone about this, they've kind of looked at me and been like, what's that? And I can't answer that for you yet, but what I can tell you is a little bit about um, what I have learned so far about the theory. So um, what I want to do today is try, without using my notes too heavily, to explain just like one little bit of concept out of all of this stuff. So here we go. Without letting myself get too lost in details that I don't particularly understand, um, the there's an idea in process theology that the really real thing is the occasion though not necessarily temporally bound, where kind of the whole universe comes together into one experience, and then that experience becomes part of all of the experience. Does that make sense at all, right? Um, it's like, I was thinking, this is really, this metaphor isn't great, but like, if you had an infinitely big closet, right? An infinitely big closet full of infinite quantity of clothes, and the like the to put together an outfit, which is the the equivalent of a really real thing of an of like the experience, you would take you know kind of everything from the closet and also all of the ways in which you've configured those clothes before, and you all of that would be kind of taken into account and pared down until you came up with an outfit, right? Does that make sense? It. Uh, there's something about time in all of this that I don't understand at all, but the general sense is that they're, they, the really real thing is event, occasion, in which all of the universe, it kind of, the word is concrescence, but like, jams into one moment. There are some diagrams that I think I remember how to draw. Let me try that. There are two drawings that the professor used during class to kind of explain this concept to us that made any sense to me. There was a third one, but I don't remember anything about it. So I'm going to try to make those drawings without looking at the notebook and explain what on earth is happening. So you have the actual occasion, and in this instant, the actual occasion is a tiny black dot, black dot on this page, okay? A tiny black dot. And then you have this process of concrescence in which kind of all of these things from the universe, right? Like all of the stuff from the universe, all of the things, all of the occasions, all of the, all of it, each of the things, right? It all comes in and that's which may or may not be spelled correctly on this piece of paper, right? So purple things come in, become little black dot, concrescence, right? But once that has happened, right, all of the things come together and immediately, like, that's happened, and it's now over, and, like, it's perishing, right? But in perishing, it doesn't actually, like, go away. It just becomes part of all of everything else. So at the same time as all of that is, like, 
you know, so as soon as all of that comes in, um, then it also starts to like go out from itself, right? To become a thing that is considered in um, other actual occasions in the world, which is transition, um, right? So things can cress in and then, right? So that's, that makes some quantity of sense, right? This one though, I don't think is as good as the other one because it doesn't really give you a sense of the extent to which kind of like all of these moments, like all of the little purple lines in were previously little black dots. There's another drawing. I think it'll make it make a little more sense. So basically the lesson of the world is that all things are spirals. All things spirals. So you've got uh, let me uh, it's like so you kind of you've got everything in the universe it's, but it's being sorted through, right? Right? So it gets what is being considered gets smaller and smaller as you go in, right? So, everything, these little, like, I'm gonna make little dashy marks to be all of the various occasions, right? And, um, as you go in, there's less and less space. I understand that you can't see this, but you will in a second. Okay. So, right? So, there's everything, everything little like dashing marks, right? And like it gets narrow and narrow and narrow until you get to here. So that's like the concrescence part, right? But then this dot can be an input for another actual occasion, right? So this, um, this concrescence, this actual occasion is objectively immortal because it becomes considered for all of the other things that happen, right? So like another thing happens, right, and there's a new spiral. It's very exciting. I told you. Spiral. It's all spirals. Um, and, right, so, like, So like, new spiral, but now this is part of everything, right? And it goes into there. And there can be like, and then that becomes objectively immortal, and so then there can be um, maybe like another thing, right, that happens. It also includes both of those, right? So, right? right? Like, like that, right? So, like, concrescence, concrescence, concrescence. And then, but because, right, because this is still kind of considered for this, it's objectively immortal, it, it exists for as long as things are happening. There's some stuff about time that I don't understand. So, now that we're clear that there's some stuff that I don't understand about time, um, I hope that that was at all, like, interesting and worth watching. Part of what I think is so interesting about it is that, um, it's a right? Process theology is about all things being perpetually in a state of becoming a new thing. Which, which is real, right? And it, like, that applies to God and stuff and whatever, but um, I gave a sermon in December about becoming, 
And so this really like fits into my conception of the universe in a complicated but nice way. Um, and this this whole like this idea that there like there is everything and in in these moments, right, like it's pared down into like what matters for that moment. Um, plays into some other stuff that I've been thinking about and I'm not going to talk about at this particular instant because this video is already probably pretty long. Um, yeah, so, uh, by means, by, by way of updating you on the rest of my life, um, I'm about to have a super busy week um, because at the end of next week I'll be in Napa for the Pacific Central District's Women in Religion Conference, uh, pretending like I know what I'm doing in any way. Um, and then there'll be like 15 days until I do my career assessment. And then it'll be, you know, time to start working on final papers. So it's not... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wrote some stuff this week that I'm pretty proud of, um, but you've already seen links to that. If you haven't, they're in the stuff. Um, I did my nails in the course of making this video. I love you. And I am super excited about your second interview, and like I said, that guy's CV might impress him, but you're awesome, and I need to hear that about as much as you do. Um, I will see you in the future. I love you.